Six countries will take part in this summer's Olympic baseball tournament, and if you didn't know who those teams were, you could probably guess five of them easily. But the one oddball in the group is Israel. Unlike the other five countries, baseball is not one of the top sports in Israel. There is no professional league. It's not played in most schools. There aren't even many places to play the game in the country. But it's not really some miracle underdog story. Israel awards citizenship to anyone of Jewish descent, and a lot of Jewish Americans have played in Major League Baseball and throughout the Major League system. So the strategy was simple. Find enough professional ballplayers of Jewish descent to fill up a roster. Give them Israeli citizenship, and there you have it. A team capable of beating all the best countries in Europe and Africa to qualify for the Olympics. But to be fair, there are some players who grew up in Israel on their Olympic roster. And not too long ago, having local players compete for positions on the same team as professional ballplayers from North America would have seemed impossible. So they are making progress. It won't surprise you that baseball was introduced by Americans immigrating to the new country in the second half of the 20th century, though the very first baseball game in the land was played on July 4, 1927 in Jerusalem. What's surprising to many, though, is that baseball did not become a hit right away. When considering the number of Americans who moved over there, combined with the fact that baseball was still America's top sport at the time, and was especially popular among American Jews. But there was just nowhere to play it, and their equipment was limited to what the new immigrants could fit in their suitcases. So for the rest of the 20th century, and the first decade of the 21st, baseball in Israel was a fringe sport played almost entirely by expats. In 1986, the Israel Association of Baseball was established. The IAB has been promoting and developing baseball in the country for the past 35 years, instructing young players, organizing tournaments, getting the right equipment, having fields built, and sending the national teams to competitions abroad. In 2007, the Israel Baseball League played its one and only season. This professional league included 120 players from nine countries. Only 15 were from Israel, though about 40% of the league was Jewish. Their goal was for the league to be 25% Israeli by its fifth year. Most of the players came from the U.S. minor leagues. Others came from professional leagues in other countries. Six teams played in three different ballparks. The schedule was 45 games over an eight-week season. Games were only seven innings, and ties were broken not by extra innings, but by a home run derby. The inaugural game was played on June 24, 2007, in front of over 3,000 fans. The champions of the 2007 season were the Bet Shemesh Blue Sox. But attendance fell short of expectations throughout the season, and the cost of bringing in paid import players led to financial problems, and the Israeli Baseball League would not make it to a second season. Professional baseball could return to Israel one day, but 2007 was not the right time for it. They had six teams with all paid professional players in a country where baseball was hardly known. Their expectations were too high, and a league of this scale was premature. In 2013, the Israeli national team was invited to take part in a qualifier for the World Baseball Classic. As I said before, Israel's citizenship requirements has given them an advantage when putting together a team for the Olympics. That advantage is even greater in the WBC, because the players don't have to be citizens, just eligible for citizenship. So any professional ball player with one Jewish parent can suit up for Team Israel. They were placed in Qualifier 1 with Spain, South Africa, and France. This took place during the Major League season, so Israel was unable to use any Major League players, and so the four countries were somewhat even. Israel opened with a 7-3 win over South Africa, and then beat Spain 4-2. But in the final, a rematch with Spain, they lost 9-7 and did not qualify. Supporters of Israeli baseball were hoping that the team would reach the big tournament, and that in turn would help grow the sport inside the country. Well, their appearance at the qualifier did nothing to spark an interest in the local population. But what it did do was get Jewish Americans interested in promoting baseball in Israel. So the 2013 qualifier, though unsuccessful, did mark a turning point for baseball in Israel. One year later, the Israel Baseball Academy was launched. About 25 or so teenagers are enrolled annually in the program. The quality of this academy can be compared with the European academies that have enabled a number of players from Europe and South Africa to work their way over to the Major League system. In 2015, pitcher Dean Kramer became the first Israeli to be drafted by a Major League team when the San Diego Padres selected him in the 38th round. Actually, Kramer had grown up in the U.S., so they are still waiting for a born and raised Israeli to be drafted. But Kramer definitely is Israeli. He's always been a dual citizen, born to two Israeli parents. He speaks Hebrew and spends two months out of every year in Israel. Kramer, now 25, made his Major League debut with the Baltimore Orioles in 2020 and continues to pitch for them in 2021. In 2016, Team Israel returned to the WBC qualifier and this time came out victorious, winning once over Brazil and twice over Great Britain, and therefore qualifying for the main tournament. At the 2017 WBC, they were placed in Pool A with three big-name countries in the baseball world, the Netherlands, Korea, and Taiwan, 
and the Israeli team surprised everyone by beating all three of them and moving on to the next round. Their amazing run continued into the next round as they opened with a win over another traditional baseball power, Cuba. But then their luck ran out. They were blown out in a rematch with the Netherlands, and then beaten by Japan and sent home. The success of the national team did get noticed in Israel, but did not create the kind of buzz that the Israeli baseball crowd had been hoping for. Not only was there a lack of homegrown stars, but the average Israeli didn't know or care about the WBC. But in July of 2019, the national team started building towards something more meaningful to the Israeli people. After going undefeated in pool play and winning 4 out of 5 in round 1, the Israeli team earned the last qualifying spot for the 2019 European Baseball Championship. Of the 8 teams in the championship, they finished 4th, which was good enough to earn them a spot in the Europe-Africa Olympic qualifier. In that tournament, Israel went 5-1, and one, including upsets of the Netherlands, Italy, and Spain, three countries they had lost to in the European Baseball Championship. This earned them the top spot and a ticket to the Olympic Games. This was a much bigger deal for the Israeli people. Unlike the WBC team, this team was made up entirely of Israeli citizens. Though most were dual citizens, only four were native Israeli. Still, they were all citizens of the country. And this is the Olympics, an event that everyone knows about. In fact, this will be the first time an Israeli team competes in an Olympic ball sport since their soccer team competed at the 1976 Montreal Games. It's sure to create a little interest in baseball in the country. And actually, it already has. The domestic league is already seeing more local participation, in what used to be almost exclusively a sport for expats. As of right now, there are only about 1,000 people, both children and adult, playing baseball in Israel, a small but growing number. In the 2021 WBSC rankings that came out last month, Israel was number 24, by far the lowest of the six Olympic teams, and down six spots from their 2020 ranking. Despite beating out all the countries of Europe to reach the Olympics, they rank lower than six of them. The reason for that is they don't do well in youth tournaments, where they're only using local players. So building the national team into one comprised of mostly native Israelis, rather than dual citizens from the U.S., is going to take some time. But if they can get more young people interested in the game, they do have the resources to develop them. 25-year-old catcher Tal Arel is one of the few members of the Israeli team that was born and raised in Israel. Only from the ages of 6 to 10 did he live in the U.S. That's where he was exposed to the game and took an interest in it. But from the age of 10, he was trained in Israel. He ended up playing college baseball in Florida, as well as in the top leagues of the Netherlands and the Czech Republic. While he never reached the major league system, he did show that young athletes in Israel can get the skills needed to move up to higher levels outside the country. The problem is, if he had grown up entirely in Israel, he most likely would have never played baseball. So they need to do a better job of getting kids involved in the game. But that's already changing. As baseball gets introduced in more schools, they're slowly bringing more kids onto the youth teams. And like just about everywhere else in the world, people in Israel are starting to take an interest in a greater variety of sports, instead of just focusing on the few traditionally popular sports. It'll probably never become one of the country's top sports, but there is room for it to grow. And that's it. For more on baseball in Israel, check the description. There's a really informative article and a couple videos that'll give you a look at baseball inside the country. Anyway, that's all for this one. Until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya!